Staffers inside the Biden administration reportedly horrified with the Afghan withdrawal and are disgusted that American citizens were left on the ground, despite the president calling the pullout an extraordinary success. One unnamed administration official telling Politico, and I'm quoting, I am absolutely appalled and literally horrified we left Americans there. But the State Department insists that efforts to get Americans back home didn't end with America's exit been consistent in that messaging uh, that we will do during the course of the evacuation, everything in our power and space permitting uh, to bring them to safety on a U.S. military airplane. Now, of course, our commitment has not expired. That commitment endures. We are looking at all possible options, air routes, land routes, uh, to continue to find ways for them to help evacuate. Chad Wolf, former acting Homeland Security a secretary and visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation, joins me now. Thank you very much for talking to us. Um, how reassuring is it to hear from Pentagon officials from the White House uh, that they, in fact, are going to lean on the Taliban to help us get Americans out of Afghanistan? Well, it's not reassuring at all. Obviously, the Taliban's a terrorist organization, and so relying on the Taliban for any type of security, whether it was for the airport or whether now it's to get Americans that are trapped in Afghanistan out after the U.S. has pulled out and withdrawn, is not comforting. It wouldn't no. be comforting to me if I was in Afghanistan, uh, and it shouldn't be the policy of the United States government. We should do all that we can. It's unconscionable, first of all, that we left Americans in Afghanistan uh, as we pulled out. Our first priority should be the safety and security of every, every American. And so the administration really needs to do more, making sure that we get all Americans out of Afghanistan that want to go. Despite these reassurances from the administration, an Afghan interpreter who helped rescue then Senator Joe Biden in Afghanistan back in 2008 is now stranded and is also pleading for help. Listen. They exit their forces from Afghanistan, but they left me and my family and like me, the other people left behind. If they find me, as yes, attract me, or for example, by my phone numbers, yes, or any kind of yes, information, as yes, we will be killed. That's too easy for them. The Austin government and escapee uh, president from Afghanistan, I'm hiding us yes, in my house. I haven't seen us yes, outside. Yes. What's going on outside? Whatever happened to no one left behind? Because that was an outright lie. Right. Well, I believe that individual, like many others, are stuck in that special immigrant visa processing. Um, the DOD inspector general just a couple of years ago talked about the, the extreme processing times and some of the, uh, the issues that they were having with that program. And so the Biden administration knew this as they were withdrawing and as they were putting individuals into this visa processing, uh, they, they knew that they weren't going to get everyone out. So again, it's very troubling that they relied on an SIV program that takes 18 to 24 months to vet individuals properly to now they're bringing individuals into the U.S. that are not properly vetted, uh, folks that are in that SIV program, but also just regular Afghans, vulnerable Afghans that are now being paroled into the country that we're having to do a lot of these security checks, which are very difficult to do uh, after the fact that they're here in the U.S. And again, it just talks about and demonstrates the chaotic and mismanaged nature of this withdrawal. I want your take on this, a piece in Foreign Policy magazine. Um, it's titled, America isn't exceptional anymore. Uh, quote, the United States can no longer claim to be the leader of the free world if it abandons strategic allies and vulnerable civilians. Your thoughts? Well, I, I do still believe that America is exceptional. Uh, I do have specific concerns. I think a, a lot of individuals do. The manner in which President Biden and this administration has really bungled uh, the, the, the withdrawal out of Afghanistan, I think it has hurt our credibility internationally and with our allies. But we can recover. Mm -hmm. The U.S. We can recover. We're stronger than this. Uh, but there needs to be accountability at the end of the day. So I hope that there is an investigation into how this was mismanaged to the, to the extent that it was. And I hope individuals are held accountable. Many Republicans are raising the alarm on relocating the thousands of Afghan refugees who are uh, apparently going to be now relocating to the U.S. Many are pointing to concerns about vetting and the potential for yeah. bad actors. And, and that is the problem we are now in. Um, however, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says that they have that covered. Let's watch. 
I can absolutely assure you that no one is coming into the United States of America who has not been through a thorough screening and background check process. And uh, there are many individuals, as you noted, who have not been through that process, and they have gone to lily pad countries as that process has been completed. It doesn't mean that that's because there is a flag. It means they have not completed their paperwork. Given how the exit strategy went down, uh, despite the fact that the Biden administration calls it a huge success, can we trust that? Well, look, I, I have uh, confidence in our screening and vetting system when it's done the appropriate way. But again, mm -hmm. as we vet individuals coming out of Afghanistan, it's very difficult. You've got to validate passports. These are Afghan passports, birth certificates. You've got to validate whether they worked for the U.S. military, where they didn't. And so that processing usually, again, takes 18 to 24 months. And now we're doing that in a matter of days and weeks to a very large population. Um, and so you, you know at the end of the day, corners are going to be cut, and there's going to be individuals that are not getting their full screen, screening and vetting procedure. And we know that because DHS is paroling these individuals in. There would be no need to parole them in if they passed their SIV background checks and they received a visa at the end of the day. So I think there's a lot of concerns, and there should be a lot of concerns that's going on with bringing this many individuals into the U.S. this in such a condensed time frame. Chad Wolf, former acting Homeland Secretary, thank you very much for talking to us. Appreciate your expertise. Thank you.